Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with yet another online battle today, once again bringing the Skaven against the Wood Elves of Spongebob, a foe that had bested me once before, so I was quite eager to defeat him with my Vermintide. We begin of course with talk of composition and deployment, and as you can see, I am playing the numbers game this time around. Let's take a look at my Skaven. I have got Tretch Craventail in charge with a front line that consists of alternating Plague Monks and Plague Monk Sensor Bearers. Again, the Sensor Bearers bring in that magical damage just in case there is physically resistant Dryads on the field. On either flank, I also have the Clan Rat Spears with shields providing some protection against potential large units. And then I've got the Warp Lightning Cannon in the middle over here, hoping to fire away right from the start and get some damage in, especially against, again, physically resistant units. Over here, I've got some extra Clan Rat Spears with shields just because I felt Fairly confident that a flanking maneuver would be coming in from this side, and I was actually quite correct. And then on either flank, I also have a pair of Skaven Slaves alongside a Skaven Slave Spear Escort. These guys are expendable, so I don't quite care if they get taken care of, but I want them to keep potential archers busy. And I have them ranked up just to make sure they last a little bit longer than they otherwise might. While up front, you can see I've got three units of Gutter Runners getting some damage in from the get-go, hoping to cause some struggle for the Wood Elves. Let's take a look at their army now. They've got Orion in charge and again a branch rate to provide some support alongside four dryads. We also have to the left over here from their perspective five units of deep west scouts with swift shiver shards again bringing in that magical damage as well as a pair of wild riders. So potentially the exact same build actually I think it is the exact same build as the previous battle from the wood elves over here. So let's take a look at how it all breaks down. You can see right away I have my gutter runners up front focusing in on Orion over here trying to get some damage in while the warp lightning cannon gets some damage into these dryads again. They are physically resistant so I want that magical ammunition coming in and causing some hurt. Unfortunately it's not the most accurate but it's doing its job. At the same time you can see as these wild riders are pushing in towards my uh, skirmishers over here I have my skaven slaves all pushing towards these deep wood scouts and at the same time I've got these guys as well pushing in towards those deep wood scouts just again hoping to keep them busy. I don't necessarily stand a chance chance. I'm not going to win these engagements per se, but I want to keep these guys occupied. These wild riders unfortunately are pushing in towards these skirmishers and there's very little I can do over here. And again, a beautiful use of the penumbral pendulum over here. I try to dodge the gutter runners. I try to pull them back, but I am just a little too slow. And that pendulum just massacres these gutter runners, but I still have a fair bit of damage done to Orion as well, so I'm relatively happy with how this is working out for me, and at the same time, I've got the Warp Lightning Cannon now firing away at these Wild Riders. Took a good hit there, killed about nine of them, in fact, in that one shot, so I'm pretty happy with what's going on over here, but I'm about to uh, turn that smile, well, into a frown here with that rear charge coming in, absolutely destroying these gutter runners. So wonderfully done there by my opponent, getting a nice rear charge on these skirmishers who I just left a little unattended as the rest of my army is trying to close the gap over here, so well done. You can see those gutter runners completely giving up on the fight immediately while the dryads over here again closing the gap onto these gutter runners but i don't quite mind that engagement as i am closing the gaps into them at the same time you can see over here Again, losing all of these engagements with these Skaven Slaves being shot up from multiple directions, but the longer I can keep these Deepwood Scouts busy with Slaves, the longer my main line over here is alive and well. The Warp Lighting Cannon as well continues to fire away into these various units, hoping to get some damage done. Orion is still just at 50% health, so I'm feeling pretty good about my current situation as I'm getting some damage into these Dryads as well from a distance. And now the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers and Tretch Craventail, again, he is anti-large, but trying to push into these Wild Riders and get some damage done while over here Orion pops forward seeker to try and close the gap into some of these gutter runners but the gutter runners are just firing away hoping to get damage in as he brings in some of his hounds hoping to take care again of the plague monks over here trying to eliminate an otherwise threatening unit over here i continue to give chase with some of these clan rat spears with their shields used to protect them against all of the range fire that's coming in and i've also still got all of these slaves slowly closing the gap towards all of these archers so i'm relatively satisfied with the skirmishing that's going on while up front over here you can see orion is in a bit of a tight spot but i am now dying away these gutter runners are giving up on the fight of course they get terrified off of course orion has that capability he has that uh, fear and terror combination and in comes another penumbral pendulum and there's nothing i can do about this one as it comes swinging down and causes a fair bit of damage to some extremely important units. Not only are my gutter runners still locked in combat over there, my plague monks and my plague monk sensor bearers have taken a fair bit of hurt between 50% and 25% of health loss. So a terrible situation for me on that left flank while in the center here though you can see the wild riders have been taken care of as Tretch Craventail is diving in there with Verminous Valor trying to make sure that he can keep up with these wild riders if they try to get away and you can see they are both made to rout. And now the warp lightning cannon is firing away at these archers as they're falling back and away from my clan right spears with shields again 
They're likely not going to close the gap, though I am very close right now. I think my opponent was maybe not paying attention. And the Warp Lightning Cannon as well, doing a fair bit of work, just reducing their health, reducing their morale, and I'm satisfied with how things are working out. Over here as well, you can see I finally managed to actually close the gap with some of these Skaven Slaves into the Deepwood Scouts over here. And these Skaven Slaves are trying to give chase to these Deepwood Scouts as well. All of those archers have been completely useless for the last well, entirety of this battle, as far as I'm concerned, at least. Meanwhile, over here, you can see the Dryads are beginning to give up as the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers are causing a significant amount of damage, and Tretch is now focusing in on Orion, hoping to take care of that unit, take care of that leadership, I should say, while the Branch Wraith, though, is a scary unit, of course, a very threatening unit in melee. You can see I have some of my units now rallying, willing to fight once more. I can keep some of these archers busy, and the Warp Lightning Cannon is now pushing forward to give chase to these archers, so I don't quite mind that, but there is better targeting possibilities for me as you can see over here as well these clan rest spears with shields are pushing and again i see an opportunity here and i want to eliminate orion as quickly as possible i've got these spears as well pushing in as this great opportunity presents itself but unfortunately a bombardment comes in from orion of course good call over here there's a massive clump of rats there's no reason not to bring in the bombardment it is not a cost of winds of magic it's just an ability so you'll see the bombardment comes in and does a fair bit of hurt especially to these skaven slave spears but again i don't quite care about losing slaves they're uh expendable literally and over here in the left flank meanwhile you can see i have come out on top as these dryads are giving up meanwhile the gutter runners are giving chase to some of these wild riders making sure they don't return to the fight while over here these clan rat spears with shields continue to give chase to these ranged units using their shields for protection while i finally managed to actually take care of one of these deepwood scout units and even though it has 64 kills it's completely useless. None of those kills actually meant anything. Back here, meanwhile, you can see this unit of Deepwood Scouts continues to fire away, while the Warp Lightning Cannon has turned around and is now focusing its attention on this unit of Deepwood Scouts instead of chasing after some of these guys that are clearly making a gap. The Dryads, you can see, have largely given up on the fight, and these Wild Riders did decide to dive back into the fight, but I have some Spears in there taking care of the Wild Riders. I send in these Plague Monks just to make quicker work of it while the Gutter Runners fire away as well, and unfortunately, Tretch Craventail finds himself engaged with the Branch Wraith, and she is going to cause a lot of hurt. The Branch Wraith is very capable. I have to be a lot more careful with how I use Tretch Craventail, but you can see these Deepwood Scouts have been taken care of as the Warp Lightning Cannon continues to fire away at these Deepwood Scouts as well, and you can see once more, these Skaven Slaves are willing to fight. They'll turn right back around and give chase to these Deepwood Scouts, and all the way to the left over here you can see we've got some shatters kicking in finally this unit of dryads has completely given up on the fight these wild riders once more routing and these wild riders are back to engage once more but again i'm pretty satisfied with how things are going with these guys the plague monk sensor bearers eat the charge there though so that's not ideal but the gutter runners are right there to respond if necessary while these plague monk sensor bearers are trying to close the gap to these deepwood scouts now i'm sacrificing some more important units but i'm fairly satisfied with the situation about the dryads or with the dryads i should say so i'm not entirely concerned maybe i should have been a bit more conservative with how I use those Plague Monk Sensor Bearers chasing after archers over here. Meanwhile, you can see the Deepwood Scouts now uh, being focused in on by both of these Skaven Slave units as the Warp Lighting Cannon continues to fire away. Gets a nice shot in there. Again, just trying to cause some damage to health and morale. Get these guys to give up on the fight because they are threatening. If I leave them alive, they're going to cause me trouble. So just trying to close the gap there. And over here, you can see these Plague Monks. I just noticed they're chasing after this uh, Wild Router unit that's been routing already. So I turned them around. But unfortunately, I didn't quite notice the Plague Monk Sensor Bear, the Plague Monks, and the Clan Rat Spears with shields over here chasing after this shattered unit of dryads they are uselessly wandering away i need them back here where there's a lot of range fire still coming in towards my gutter runners and i try to respond in kind get some range support in of my own and i also have these clan rat spears with shields pushing in for some rear charges over here obviously if i can sandwich these deepwood scouts i'll get some work done but unfortunately the branch wraith is right there very threatening so i have to turn around and consider that threat while you can see these gutter runners begin routing despite my use of stand or die tretch craven tail as well just trying to close the gap i think to some of these deepwood scouts trying to get away from the branch wraith as well while these spears as well are pushing in so again just trying to get that sandwich going well, over here you can see unfortunately the wild riders were able to defeat my Plague Monk Sensor Bears where I was so confident just moments ago, but I sent in these Skaven Slave Spears over here to try and intercept some of these Dryads. They're not going to do the best against the Dryads, but I want to slow down the approach over here as I'm in a bit of a precarious situation in my opinion. At the same time, you saw Tretch Craven Tail just popped Verminous Valor to cause some hurt to these Deepwood Scouts, hoping to get these guys to die and give up on the fight as these rear charges come in as well. So I'm quite satisfied with how I've managed to take care of or at least occupy these Deepwood Scouts. While all the way back here, you can see these Deepwood Scouts as well have been made to give up on the fight. They got completely bogged down by both of these Skaven Slave units. The Warp Lightning Cannon as well kept firing away 69 kills right now. So great job by the Warp Lightning Cannon. And unfortunately, the Deepwood Scouts over here have returned to the fray. So I just either have to turn around and take care of them or just do something about them before they do too much work without me noticing.
the Branch Wraith, meanwhile, you can see still a threat over here. So I give chase to her with both of these Plague Monk units, hoping to bog her down while Tretch Craven Tail continues to give chase to various units. He is anti-large. The Water Riders over here have put themselves in a bit of a precarious situation, but in comes the Withering, reducing armor and more importantly, perhaps leadership as the Branch Wraith dives in. So a lot of damage being done there. And unfortunately, Tretch Craven Tail does route and that is terrible for my Skaven. You can see they're giving up on the fight. These Plague Monks over here took a great volley from the Deepwood Scouts. Let's move back in over there. You can see the Plague Monks are in a terrible situation. One of these Deepwood Scouts units has given up on the fight, but these other two are just firing away, doing a lot of work. And unfortunately, right now, the Wood Elves are coming out on top. So a terrible situation for me, though I do manage to get those Wild Riders to completely shatter. While back here, you can see the Warp Lighting Cannon again is repositioning itself, hoping to get some damage in while this unit of Deepwood Scouts ultimately decided to shatter as well. Off in the distance, or up front, I should say, rather, Tretch Craven Tail continues to give up on the fight as these Deepwood Scouts continue to fire away. Now at this unit of Plague Monks, again, trying to get these guys to drop, die, and give up on the fight. You can see all of that concentrated fire doing so much damage. These guys decide to route ultimately, and they might even shatter with so much fire coming their way. You can see, though, I have these Skaven Slave Spears here pushing in while the Warp Lightning Cannon continues to fire. And over here, this entire clump of three units just doing absolutely nothing, doing absolutely nothing. Extremely disappointed in myself over there, but I was just concentrating on the micromanagement over here, making sure that I didn't die off. Uh, because of all of this range support that's coming through and by Tretch being chased by the Branch Wraith over here as well. So a really rough spot for me as I'm sending these Skaven Slave Spears in to maybe do some work. I also have these Skaven Slaves over here trying to push in and provide some support. And ultimately, I decide that I need to regroup as uh, Tretch there is in a very precarious situation. I decide to pull everybody back over here to form up with the Warp Lightning Cannon. I also noticed that there is this unit of Deepwood Scouts back here, so I have to be very wary of that. And in a moment's time, you can see I actually noticed these guys as well, just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So I send them in as well, and I try to form up. As you can see, the orders that I've given, I'm trying to form up over here, use the Warp Lightning Cannon to cause some damage, focusing in on these Dryads to cause a bit of a hurt before they can actually close the gap. And they are clumped up very nicely here, so a prime target. They're very low on health, very low on morale, and the artillery fire is going to do a lot to help me out. So you can see the Warp Lightning Cannon just trying to get some damage in as those Deepwood Scouts fire into my Warp Lightning Cannon, but look at that glorious shot over there. The Dryads are falling apart, so I'm quite satisfied. In come two more bolts from the Warp Lightning Cannon, and these Dryads really don't stand much of a chance, so good shooting over here, I would say. That, actually, one of those shots was kind of flubbed, so terrible timing on my part, but we're doing some damage to those Dryads before they're able to close the gaps, and again, just trying to form up over here, and then I'm also sending the uh, Skaven Slaves over here, chasing after the Deepwood Scouts, hoping to eliminate that threat, though they are very low on ammunition right now, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Again, the... Uh, shots now going in towards the Deepwood Scouts. Instead, I'm a little worried about that range support. I feel like I've done enough damage to the Dryad, so I switch my targets a little bit. Maybe not the best of thoughts over there. Maybe not the best of calls, I should say. And the Skaven Slaves continue to give chase to these Deepwood Scouts, and again, they're made completely useless. They are out of ammunition. They're not doing anything, and I'm just giving chase and making sure they stay occupied, that they don't charge into something that might be in a threatened position. Meanwhile, you can see Tretch Craven Tail there still running away from the Branch Wraith. So the Branch Wraith actually might have been wasting her time over here. It might have been better for her to actually dive in here alongside all of these Dryads, provide some of that encouragement, provide some of that support that is extremely important at the death, this close to the end of a battle. You can see the uh, Warp Lightning Cannon continues to fire away at some of these Deepwood Scouts again, still getting some damage in there, trying to get these guys to fall apart. Unfortunately, you can see I've got these Skaven Slaves giving up on the fight. The Plague Monks over here as well dive in against these Dryads, and that's just not good enough for me. And the Dryads just punch right through my Plague Monks, and they give up on the fight. While back here, the Deepwood Scouts now pushing forward, chasing after my Skaven Slaves as I send my Skaven Slaves in towards these guys who still have a lot of ammunition left, or not a lot, but they have enough ammunition to make me nervous. Unfortunately, with all of that focus fire coming in, these Skaven Slaves are dropping in morale and in health. They're just dying away while these Deepwood Scouts turn around and give chase to my Warp Lightning Cannon. And the Warp Lightning Cannon as well, very low on ammunition right now. I try to get the last couple shots into these Dryads and you can see in goes a little bit of damage, enough to get one of these guys to rout and that might be the difference between victory and defeat over here. But you can see the Warp Lightning Cannon is now out of ammunition and I don't notice that just yet as these guys are still pushing in towards the uh, central engagement over here. At the very last minute, I notice what's going on. I turn around and I get a charge into the Deepwood Scouts and the Warp Lightning Cannon is actually able to get some decent damage done into the Deepwood Scouts because of that counter charge, I suppose. And uh, we are actually coming out on top against the Deepwood Scouts. Over here, though, you can see the Skaven Slaves are doing a lot of work as well. They got these Deepwood Scouts to give up in melee and now giving chase to this unit of Deepwood Scouts as well, who are also out of ammunition. The Dryads are almost all routing except for this one unit. So the Slaves are sort of winning the day right now for the Skaven, but of course off in the distance there is that branch rate that's going to do a lot of hurt. Back here the Warp Lighting Cannon is taking care of the Deepwood Scouts in melee. I never thought I'd see that. That's a sight that's uh, definitely a surprise for me. But finally these Skaven Slaves over here give up on the fight, but not to worry. We've got these Skaven Slaves closing the gap and if they can stay confident, if they can stay willing to fight, we 
we might come out on top over here. They're closing the gap ever so slowly. These guys are routing, and ultimately these slaves drop their flags. They not only rout, they completely shatter and give up on the fight. The Warp Lighting Cannon as well managed to get these guys to rout, but now I have to be very careful. You can see I try to peel them around and try to get them to form up over here alongside these forces as the Deepwood Scouts are giving chase. I don't want to get isolated and caught out because morale will drop as it just did and there you have it these guys route as well so a terrible situation for myself and you can see Tretch still being chased off to the edge of the map he is not in a good spot whatsoever and then decides to rally of all possibilities he decides he's going to stick in the fight so not living up to his namesake not a craven tail at all here turns around and decides to chase in and and join in on this battle as my plague monks my plague monk sensor bears and my clan rat spears with shields are forming up for a final engagement hoping to take care of some of these dryads take care of these deep wood scouts in melee because they will not stand a chance because of the numbers i have uh, so this is actually currently in my favor and I'm hoping to get these charges in cleanly. You can see these dryads are already wavering. So in come the plague monks first. They are of course anti-infantry so these deep wood scouts are not going to have much of a good time over here. And off to the side as well you can see I actually have my warp lightning cannon crew returning to the fight, willing to fight once more. And over here as well you can see the dryads just being absolutely demolished by these clan rat spears with shields. I send in the plague monk sensor bearers as well with their magical damage so the physical resistance doesn't count for anything. In comes a shatter over there. These deep wood scouts as well willing to shatter. Another shatter over here and now these deep wood so the last one's left over here and they very quickly route and are very close to shattering as well while over here Tretch Craventail continues to try and close the gap and form up with the rest of his army. This is still a dangerous situation. The Branch Wraith is still a very threatening unit and I'm not yet out of the weeds. You can see I am forming up once more. We're going to kick it up a notch. You can see I'm just lining myself up, trying to recover some of my vigor over here, give myself as much time as possible, standing stationary. But in comes a penumbral pendulum, and wonderfully done by my opponent there. Saw that beautiful lineup. I tried to dodge it, and I was just far too slow and uh, this is exactly what I mean. I'm not out of the weeds just yet. I could still fall apart despite what it looks like numerically. You can see the balance of power is still more or less level. So a cast here or there can completely destroy my situation. Just like that penumbral pendulum almost did. You can see though Tretch Craventail has almost returned. He's about to bring his encouragement back to the, uh, to the field over here. And now I decide to split my forces a little bit. A little bit of a risk because his encouragement isn't necessarily going to reach all of them, but I want to try and get a full surround on the Branch Wraith. I want to try and use my abilities as well, try to get uh, Stand Your Ground, or I think it's Stand or Die, and just keep myself alive and fighting. I also have, of course, uh, Verminous Valor that I can use to get some extra speed in on the charge. So getting a full surround and now moving in towards the Branch Wraith, trying to get this charge off perfectly. You can see the Branch Wraith looks like she's leaning this way, so I actually pull these guys back ever so slightly as she pops Foe Seeker for that extra vigor and speed. I think I pull these guys back again. I want a perfectly timed charge over here. I cannot isolate any of these units, and I think this is perfect. So I send everybody in at the same time. In comes Verminous Valor. In come the Chargers. In comes Stand or Die, and I get a full surround charges from all sides over here morale drops on the branch rate significantly and she drops her flag and decides she's going to try to live to die another day now, the battle really could have gone either way right to the end had my opponent used one of the wild riders to occupy and eliminate my warp lightning cannon they would have almost certainly won in fact i would say my warp lightning cannon won me the battle by causing a great deal of damage to the Dryads on their final approach and by eliminating a unit when out of ammunition. And let's give some credit to all of those Skaven slaves as well. They did very well to distract the Deepwood Scouts and ate a lot of arrows, allowing for a Skaven victory. Tretch, the damn Craven, proved his worth right at the end and got a rather poetic 13 kills as well. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content. Online battles and Total Breakdown will continue to bring you a constant flow of tactical analysis and advice. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to meeting you on the battlefield.